Good afternoon, everybody. This is Susan. Welcome to the MultiBio 700 online training course. Let's begin our course now. In today's course, it includes totally four parts. The first part is the sample introduction of the MultiBio 700. And the second part is the hardware introduction and hardware FAQ. And the third part is the basic functions introduction of the device. And the last one is the FAQ of the device. Okay, now let's begin the first part. Simple introduction. About the multiple 700, firstly we need to know its CPU. The CPU of the device is 800 MHz. And the second one is its memory. The memory of the multiple 700 is 256 M fresh and 64 M SD RAM. And the third one is the face capacity. It is 800 by standard and can be reached to be 3,000 to be optional. And what about its, what about its fingerprint capacity? It is, it is 2,000 by standard and can be optional to be 5,000. And about the access control interface. It can be, the device can be used to connect the third party electric lock, door sensor, alarm, via bell and exit button. And the last one, we need to know its vacant signal. It has the wagon in and wagon out port. The wagon in port is used to be is used to connect with the wagon reader, such as KR one zero E KR one zero M, and the wagon out port is used to connect with the embryo panel. Okay, this is the basic introduction of the device. Let's go to the hardware introduction and hardware FAQ. In this part, it totally includes three points. The first point is the in interface introduction. It includes the front view and the side view. About the second point, it is the hardware introduction. Includes all parts of module of the device. And the last point, it is the hardware FAQ. Here, it includes seven common FAQ. We can share this FAQ later. First, let us go to the interface introduction. This is the front view of the device. We can learn from, from the top to the button. The topiest one is the LED indicator. Behind, it is a touch screen. And here it is, there are two touch keys in the right side, 
in the left side and the right side. And about the middle of the at the middle of the body of the multiple 700, it is the camera. And behind, there are two push buttons. And in the bottom of the device, it is the fingerprint sensor. Around the fingerprint sensor, it is the ID card swipe, swipe area. So we usually swipe ID card or my fair card in this area around the fingerprint sensor. So this is the front view. About the side view, there are two points we need to know. The first one is the reset button here. And the second one is the USB USB port here. So what is the reset button used for? The reset button is used to restart the device. Some clients, some customers may mistake that, may make a mistake that they thought the reset button is used to re reset the device to be factory setting, but that is wrong. The reset button is not used to reset the device to its factory setting. It is used to restart the device. Sometimes the device, sometimes we will meet with such a condition that the device hang during it it's working. It hangs. If it is hard to power off the device, we can use this reset button to restart the device. And this is the USB port. The USB port is used to insert the USB disk and then upload or download user information and attendance logs from the device to the software or from the from one device to another device. Okay, this is the side view of the Multibel 700. Let's, let's go to the detailed hardware introduction of the main board and core board inside the device. Okay. The same, we need Let's, let us learn from the top to the button. The top is one is the LED indicator light. And about this ball, maybe most of the customer knows that. It is the 800 core ball. It is the second biggest ball, right? And in the left side, this smaller module, it is called idea car module. And about the biggest ball, it is called the main ball of Multibio 700. And about this one, it is the loudspeaker. It has something to do with the sound. And about this cable, it is the touch screen cable. And about this one, this bigger cable, it is the three inch display cable. It is used to connect this ball with the screen. And about this biggest ball, it is named TFT pin ball. And about, and about this cable, it is called touch screen cable also. Okay, let's go to the right side. About this one. It is called the color color camera cable. And about this ball, 
It is called the Infrared Lambo Keyboard Panel. About this, about this ball, it is called the Camera Ball. And in the button, it is very familiar to all of us. It is the fingerprint sensor. Next, let's go to the main board of the Multivolt 700. Firstly, please look at the front view. The front view of the device, uh, the front view of the Multivolt 700 main board. From the top, this slot is called Wi-Fi module slot. It can be used to it can be used to connect with the Wi-Fi module to realize the Wi-Fi function in the device. And about this module, it is the my my fair or ID module. If the style is B O three, then it is a my fair module. If it is if it is A O two, then it is an ID module. So we can identify whether it is a my fair module or ID module by the A O two or B O three. Next, please look at this smallest chip. It is called RS four A five chip, and beside the smallest chip, it is the it is a bigger chip. It is called two two three two chip. From its name, we can know that the four A five chip has something to do with the four A five function in the device, right? And the two three two chip has something to do has a lot to do with the 232 function in the device and about this component it is called Charles voltage stay billable component okay this is the left side and about the right side the biggest chip is called MCU chip this one MCU chip and behind there is a battery. It is called three voltage button battery. What is what is this three voltage button battery used for? It is used it is used to check whether the time, the date is right or not in the device. And behind it is a RTC component. RTC means real time clock module. And in the button, in the button, uh, there are two relays. The first one is the lock relay. And the second one is the alarm relay. The lock relay is used to control the lock. And the alarm relay is used to control the extra, external bell. So if the lock of the device has something wrong, we need to firstly we need to think about the lock relay. If it is working normally, if, if it is working well, and if the external bell does not work normally. We need to we need to refer to the to the alarm relay. So this is the whole of the front view of multiple seven hundred main board. Let's come to the back view, back side of the main board. And about the back side, we need to know two chips. The first one is this little one, it is called 1580 power chip. And what about and what about the bigger one? It is called the USB decoding chip. 
So this is this. So this is the hole about the front wheel and the back back wheel of the main ball. Let's come to the let's come to the hardware problem. Hardware FAQ. After we finish all of the detailed introduction of the hardware. The first, the first example is the TCP/IP. If the TCP/IP communi communicates communication failure, how do we? How can we deal with it? Okay. What does TCP/IP communication failure? I mean, when we have when we have done everything well, every setting well in the device, including its IP, its net mask, and it and also the PC, uh, the IP of the PC is right, and the IP of the PC and the IP of the device are in the same. Segmentation. All of the setting is right, but TCP/IP communicate fail. If this situation happens, the follow three components can be at can be the one of its reasons. The first component is the 25M crystal oscillator. That's one. And the second one is the network chip. That's one. And when we turn back the cable, this is the back of the cable. We can see the network transformer. Okay, so there are totally three components we need to pay attention to if this situation happens. Network chip, network transformer, and 25M crit. Crystal oscillator. If it fails to communicate with TCP, TCP IP, please firstly restore the device to factory default setting and reset the communication setting. If it, if it still does not work after doing this after having this uh, setting, police replace the network transformer. Network transformer here, this component. If it still not work, after replacing the network transformer, police pay attention to the network chip. This is the network chip. And after replacing the network chip, check again. If still not work, please replace this component, 25M crystal oscillator. So the first step is the network transformer, and the second step is the network chip. The last step is the 25M crystal oscillator. Then I think after chatting with these three steps, then TCP IP communication works. Okay, next question. If the device has no sound, all the sound is hoarse, what can we do for this? This is the this is the amplifier chip of the back of the core ball. The amplifier chip has a lot to do with the sound function. So when the sound is when no sound or sound hole, or the sound is hoarse, police firstly replace the loudspeaker. Where is the loudspeaker? Let us uh, let us go let us go to the this picture, this picture. This is the loudspeaker. 
if the sun, if the sun, if there is no sun or the sun is cold, please first only pay attention to this hardware loudspeaker. And then, if replacing the loudspeaker, it is still not working. Please pay attention to this amplifier chip. And then after replacing the amplifier chip, it works. This situation, the, sound ha the device has no sound or the sound is hoarse, will be solved. And about the third FAQ, display problem. What does display problem mean? If the screen of the device is blank or it is blue, it is not working normally. Please firstly pay attention to the screen hardware and the LCD display cable, this cable and the screen. If the device, if the device is blue or white, Please firstly replug or replace the LCD cable. This cable, LCD cable. And if it is not, and if it is still not work, please replace with a good LCD screen. And then problem solved. Okay, this is the third example. Let's go to the next one. If there is no response of touch screen, how can we how can we solve it? No response of touch screen means no matter where, wherever you touch on the screen, there is always no response. It does not work. It cannot go into the menu. If we meet with such a situation. Please pay attention to two components. The first one is the touch screen. And the second one is this six pin cable. How can we solve it? If no response of touch screen, please firstly replace with a good touch screen. If it is not working, please replace with a 6-pin cable. This one, 6-pin cable. And after that, this hardware problem solved. Okay, next. Some clients will meet with such a problem that the, dev the time and the date of the device often goes back to zero. For example, the time, the time uh, I set in the device now is 8 a.m. But after some hours, it goes back to zero. About this problem, we need to pay attention to the main ball of the device. This one is the main ball right and in the main board we need to pay attention to three components the first one is the MCU chip this one the biggest chip I mentioned before right it is the MCU chip and after that we need to pay attention to this one battery it is named 3, three voltage button battery and the last one is the clock chip RTC, right? RTC, real-time clock chip. And how to solve it? If the time of the device goes back to zero, please firstly check the voltage of the button battery, this one. Voltage of the button battery should be 3 voltage. 
if it is lower than two point two point five voltage, lower than two point five voltage, please replace a good one. That means if the voltage is lower than two point five, then this battery cannot work. Replace it, please. And if if the button battery works well, please pay attention to the clock chip. That's one RTC clock chip. Sorry, that's one clock chip. And if the clock chip works well, please pay attention to the MCU chip. That's one the biggest chip, MCU chip. So there are there are only three steps. The first one is the three voltage button battery. The second one is the RTC real time clock chip, and the third one is the MCU the MCU chip. Okay, I think after checking these three steps, then this problem will be easily solved. Let's go to the next one. No alarm output. That means. We often use a, an external bell to connect with to connect to connect with uh, the device. But when the time reach, but the external bell does not ring. I mean, there is no sound from the external bell. So how to solve this problem? Okay. We need to pay attention to these two components of the main board. It is still the main board. The first one is the alarm relay. This relay is the alarm relay. The second one is 74HC14D chip. The name is a little long, right? In about the alarm relay, as I has. As I have mentioned above, it has a lot to do with the alarm. And if no alarm output signal, please firstly replace the alarm relay. This one, the second relay, alarm relay. And after replacing the alarm relay, check again if the problem does not solve. Neither. Please check. Please replace the 74HC 14D chip. This chip. And if it is still not solved, please pay attention to this chip, the biggest chip, also biggest chip, MCU chip. So there are totally three steps. The first one is the alarm relay. The second one is. 74HC14D chip. The third one is MCU chip. Okay, understand it. Let's go to the last FAQ. Some clients sometimes will give me feedback that the lock of the device cannot work. So if we really meet, if we or our customers meet this problem, how to deal with it? Okay, the reference components are as follow. We need to pay attention to two components as follow. Also, it is the MCU chip. Firstly, biggest chip, MCU chip. And the second one is lock relay. This one is lock relay, and the second one is alarm relay, right? Okay. When we are unable to release the door, please firstly pay attention to the lock relay. If the lock relay works well, we can we can hear a little sound. D from the lock relay when we open the door, when we verify 
we can hear a little sound from the lock relay D if it works well. But if we cannot hear that little sound, that means it is broken. It is need to be replaced. Okay, after check the lock relay, please pay attention to the MCU chip. Only these two steps, the lock cannot work properly, problem can be solved. Okay, these are, these are the whole, these are totally seven, seven FAQ, seven examples of the hardware introduction. Next, let us go to the basic function of the multiple 700. Basic function. Here we have four. The first one is internet communication. The second one is lock con connection. And the third one is Wigan Reader Connection. And what about the last one? It is Connection with Embire. About the Internet communication, we have two ways. The first, is, the first way is to connect the device uh, with the computer through a, through a router, a hub. And the second way is use, a, use an internet cable to connect the device directly with, the, with a computer. And about the lock connection, we also uh, will talk about two connection ways. The first one is the normal, op normal open connection. And the second one is the normal closed connection. About the third one, Wigan Reader Connection. It is the multiple 700 to connect with a Wigan Reader. And about the last one, Connection with Embire. It is the multiple 700 to be a Wigan Reader to connect with the Embire. So let's begin the first one, Internet Communication. About this one, about this one, we use this port. We use this port to be the internet communication port. This port is RJ451, RJ452, RJ453, and RJ456. Firstly, we need a router. Secondly, we need a computer. And then, connect, use an internet cable to connect the device with the hub. And then, secondly, from the hub to the computer. This is the first way we usually connect the device with the computer. And the second way is direct connection to PC. The same, we use this port, RJ. And here is a computer. We can use an internet cable directly connect the device with the computer. Okay, so these are two ways to connect. Let's, let's go to the next one, the lock connection. About the lock connection, often we use this port this port. What are this port? It includes alarm negative 
along positive NC comb NO button GND sensor bell positive and bell negative. Firstly, we are going to talk about the normal open lock. This is the lock. And this is the multi-bio 700. And this is the power. And about the power, the left side is positive, 12 voltage. And the right side is the negative. How to connect how, what is the connection? Firstly, police connect the sensor from the lock with the sensor from the multiple 700. Secondly, police connect the sensor from the lock to the GND from the multiple 700. Thirdly, police connect the G and D from the lock with the NO1 from the multi-bio 700. Last, police connect the 12 voltage from the lock with the positive of the power and the negative of the power connects with the comb of the multi-bio 700. This is the connection of the normal open lock. So what about the normal closed lock? Same, we use this port for the normal closed lock. This is the lock. And this is the multi-bio 700. And this is the power. And from the sensor, sensor from the lock connects with Sensor from the device. Sensor from the lock connects with GND from the device. 12 voltage from the lock connects with positive of the power. Negative of the power connects of comb of the multi-bio 700. GND from the lock connects with, with NC1 from the multi-bio 700. So this is the connection for normal closed lock. Okay, now we have talk we have talked about two connection ways. The first one is the normal open lock and the second one is the normal closed lock. Please remember its connection way from the lock and the power and the device. Next. Let's go to the wagon reader connection. About the wagon reader connection, please pay attention to this port. This port. What are this port? This port can close beep, G L E D, R L E D. I W D O I W D one G and D and twelve voltage. Okay, this is the wagon reader, wagon wagon car reader, and this is the multiple seven hundred. How to connect between these two readers? Please firstly connect the power. 12 voltage power from the reader connects with 12 voltage from the multiple 700. Then G and D from the reader connects with G and D from the multiple 700. WD1, WD1 from the wagon reader connects with IWD1 from the multiple 700. And WDO from the wagon reader connects with IWDO from the multi-bio 700. And then RLED from the wagon reader connects with 
RLAD from the multi-valve 700 and GLAD from the wagon reader connects with GLAD from the multi-valve 700 and the beeper from the wagon reader connects with beeper from the multi-valve 700. This is the connection between the reader and the multi-valve 700 device. Okay, let's Okay, let's go to the next one. Wigan input and output setting and inside the device. Firstly is the Wigan input setting. We need to pay attention to this one. Input call number. When will we use Wigan input setting in the device? Okay. When we want to use a wagon reader, such as KR10E, to connect with the multi 700, it is needed to use the wagon input port in the device. So we need to do some setting in the wagon input setting inside the device. And normally we use this one, card number, input, the style of input is card number. So when the car verifies in the wagon reader, the car number will be transferred to the multi 700 and about the wagon output setting. When will we use the wagon output setting? Okay, when we use the multi 700 to connect with the, with the Embire panel, we need to use the Wigan output setting inside the multi 700 and the output style we normally we choose the ID number that means the ID the ID number from the multi 700 will be transferred to the Embire panel this is the setting about the Wigan input and output Next, let's go to the connection with Embire. This about this connection, we use this port. What are these ports? It includes WDO, WD1, GND, 232RX, 232TX, GND, 4A5A, 4A5B. About this port. What is the what what is the connection? This is the access controller and this is the Embire Multibio seven hundred. Firstly we need to use the WD one from the access controller to connect with the WD one from the multibell seven hundred. Secondly, we need to use the WDO from the access controller to connect with the multi the WDO of the multi 700. Lastly, we need to use the GND from the access controller to connect with the GND of the multi 700. So, the connection with Embire is very simple, right? Okay, this is, okay, this this a whole of the uh, basic introduction. It includes it totally includes uh, four parts. The first one is the internet con connection. The second part is uh, the connection of lock, and the third part is the connection with wagon reader, and the fourth part is the connection with Embire. Okay. Let's go to the let's go to some FAQ of the basic function. The first one. The users are registered in device A with face. Could we copy the users from device A to device B?
it is not suggested to copy users from device A to device B, which is because the using environment between device A and device B is different. It is better to use the device where you register the users. Let, uh, for example, if we register if the device A is installed in a dark environment, and then we register users, and the device B is installed in a, a sunshine environment and we want to verify in device B and then copy the user from a dark place to a sunshine place. It is not suggested to do so because it is hard to verify because the users are registered in a dark place. The condition, the situation is different with the sunshine place. Question 2. Could the device know the face with glass and no glass? Yes, it can. But when registering, it is needed to firstly register with glass. During this process, take off the glass. To the end of, to the end of the registering process, then keep it. So no matter you verify with glass or without glass, it is okay. And the last question, how to do if the device has an administrator and we want to clear it? Most of, many, many customers will meet with this problem, right? And I think you have already knew how to deal with this situation. If you know the IP of the device, Please connect the device with the time attendance software and then go as follow. ASIC manage advanced function and then clear admin privilege. This one. This is the time attendance software. Please go to the device manage advanced function and then clear admin privilege then you can go into the menu of the device after doing the, uh, this. So this, this are the whole of the training course. It totally includes four parts. The first part is the basic introduction of the multiple 700. And the second part is the hardware introduction and hardware FAQ. And the third part is the basic function, basic function introduction. And the last part is the FAQ of basic function. Okay, thank you for your listening. Do you have any question to ask? If you have any question, uh, we can discuss together here. Please hand up and let me know uh, if you have any questions.